Hello, welcome back. I want to start the day off with one recording. This seems to really be helping me. So I start off right by Mercedia, allowing me to get right into the zoo. I don't even have to do anything here. I've been waiting for you. Come, we must go to the Tower of Prayer. That's ready. Huh? Birth from a womb of dragon's maw, and born into the stars. By light and darkness cast aloft, our dreamtime oaths resworn. Moon is swathed in ever light, never again to no eclipse. Earth with hollowed bounty reconciled. some software issues. Pray now with all your heart. Prophecy must be made reality. There is no other time but now. children. She has heard our prayers. So, who is she? What's happening? Why is this changing now? And why am I praying to a space for She is risen. The promised ship of light. The Luna Whale! I like this song. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I always appreciate hand-drawn stuff, especially if I'm only looking at it for five seconds. A voice spoke to me in the midst of our prayers. Go to the moon, it said. He awaits you there. To the moon? But how? The lunar whale is a ship from the moon. According to the writings I've discovered, there should be a teleportation crystal on board in addition to the crystals that serve it to power its flight. That crystal controls travel between here and the moon. Speak to it. It will transport you between the two faster than you can even blink. I see. We will search for it. Of course! The land of Mercedia itself forms a dragon. Uh, a ship from the moon? You could have built it. You're telling me we can fly to the big, that big whale-shaped thing to the moon? Whale. It is fueled by some matter of magic. Let's do Rosa. So we can get a free. Oh, you know what I forgot to do last time? Talk to the fat chocolate. I've got a bit more training I need to do with them. This one's new. Catch the monsters that appear to attack them with shurikens. Pull the stylus down on edge to use a ninja transformation technique and avoid 
avoid damage from enemy attacks. This one's the easiest one I remember. A bit harder than I was actually. I got halfway through in my first try, so it can't be that hard. So I'm gonna pause this for a bit and finish this up. Alright, so I pressed the wrong button in order to get back to my video, so I guess I just have a five minute long video now. This was a lot harder than I remember it being. I think it's, it's still the easiest one without cheats, but whatever. And there we go, max out stats all the way through. No thank you. So there's a... And you can just sleep in the energy pods for a bit. And it fully restores everything. Now there's two crystals here. One of them flies, the other controls. As you can imagine, I always get the two mixed up. Because we have flights right off the bat, we can explore the entire luminous surface uh, without any issues. I'm just gonna go ahead and map everything out right off the bat. Always fun. Now there's three pictures of interest. One is this boy right here. We'll get to that when we get to that. There's another right here. And I think there's a third right down here. This one's going to be the most interesting right off the bat, because we found some humming ways. They're certainly hum humming along. They have really powerful stuff for sale, like elixirs. I seem to have plenty of everything, so I'm not going to worry just yet. But you should always remember this place before doing difficult stuff. Level Lust is nice if you want to grind up some levels. I change my name again? What do you mean? Fellows once built a ship and flew to the blue planet. I recall you had a knack for naming things. You're called Hummingway. So I might be missing something with the Hummingway quest line because I think he's supposed to be up there. I'll look into that between videos. Hmm. That's the annoying thing about the whale here. Okay, the cube controls it. The crystal moves it. The other point of interest is right here. It's a really... It's just the last optional dungeon. 
and it's really difficult. I'm not gonna go in there just yet. I can do it, I've done it before. It's just there's no point to stress out about it at the moment. Because you don't really get anything in there that benefits you right now. Gonna do one more save here. Incredible! To the moon in the blink of an eye. But this is the moon. Why does being here make me feel this way? From way out here, the planet looks quick, perfectly round. Around the moon, the same moon we always gaze up to in the sky. I'm not sure if I voice acted that one. Just making sure of it. You don't have to get these guys the first time through. You can double back and get it. I'm probably going to go ahead and do that. Get everything I can on the first pass and then come back. Uh, don't do a back attack on me. Counter kick, please. Yeah. So only is missing a lot. Bad start, but I don't need a pair right now. Gotta love Rydia. Still using the Defender. I wish I could use the Excalibur right now, but gotta wait a bit longer. Those are always nice to get. I love how alien these enemies are. It's not missing. I don't love how powerful they are. 600 damage from the back row. The poison, of course, is frustrating as well. I can deal with that rather easily, I guess. Fifty-two? Damn. I just wish there was something I could do to have her to give her a stronger nuke. Although she really doesn't need a stronger nuke, I guess. Quiet. Eerily so. Yeah, his healing has really fallen off. I didn't expect him to get this far. Ooh, golden apple. I remember that. Slight preference for Rosa there. Because if she's down, then it's a lot more difficult to do anything else. Just waiting on Lydia to make the game. No oh, counter at the end. It's a bit unfortunate. I always ran from these guys because they're immune to physical attacks, and magical attacks would take resources. But with my system right now, where I'm basically never running out of MP, like it's fine. Uh, plus, I barely give anything. Yeah, d just have ready a cast to summon, and they're gone. It might be a bit more of a problem. I'm right there. I could double back to it, but I don't think it'll save me any time. I think Edge is doing about as much damage as Cecil is at the moment. More counters, please. God, this guy is in the back for quite a few hits. I guess it's because I'm spreading my attacks. Spreading the attacks works a lot better when you're up against weaker enemies. For the stronger 
It's not going to be as apparent why I'm doing it. Sirens. Those four is a random encounter. I think the rarest random encounter you can get. If you... Use those in a particular room, you can force the pink flans, which have a rare chance of dropping uh, the pink tails, which you can then use to trade in the uh, the adamantite caves. That should force an enemy to get get down to weak HP. Almost a one shot. This looks like it might be a, a confusing layout, but you just go forward, and you can finish it off. These guys do have some HP on them, though. I think I need Rydia for them. This would be so much more annoying if I, did, if I didn't have these summons. I think spreading out the damage is better, because if I'm dealing with a lot of enemies, it'll soften them up for Rydia. If I'm only dealing with one, it's, it's not skin off my back. That poison is there. The option you have as your auto attack doesn't necessarily have to be something that you have equipped. So right now I have a... Uh, Attack as an auto attack, and I can't actually attack from the main menu. So sometimes in boss fights and the like, where I want him to attack, I just do auto battle. What was it? Did I check what everyone else had to say? Could have imagined there was life on the moon. Strange. The place feels almost familiar. Don't be all the disgusting monsters up here. Just keep on going forward. And I'm in the Crystal Palace. At last, you've arrived. Where are you? I am Fosoya, and I am at charge with watching over the slumber of the Lularnians. Lularnians? Yes, we, the people of the moon. Long ago, the world was lay between the Red Planet and the Great Behemoth stood at the verge of destruction, both terrible and complete. The last survivors of that devastation boarded a ship and escaped to the blue planet. Blue planet? The one that you call home. But your planet was still in the midst of its evolution, you see. And so those travelers create a second moon for the planet, and there they settled into a long and quiet slumber. You're the ones they call the Lunarians. Indeed, but there is one among us who was loath to sleep. 
He thought it fit that we should simply raise all existing life on the blue planet and claim it as our own. It's horrible. Yes. And so I used my powers to force him into hibernation with the others. But as he slept, his will grew stronger and took on a conscience all its own. It reached out to men with tainted hearts on your planet, twisting them into beings yet darker still. And through them, he began to gather the crystals. But he was manipulating Golbez. Does this guy have a name? His name is Zemus. The crystals function as a source of energy, you see. I fear he has gathered them in order to activate the interdimensional elevator within the Tower of Babel. With it, he will be able to transport the Giant of Babel to your planet and use it to extinguish all life there. Oh no! But do not be mistaken. His will is not that of all we Lunarians. The rest of us have been waiting quietly for your people's planet's people and progress to such a point that we might treat one another as equals. But we wait and sleep, dreaming of that day. And the lunar whale, where did it come from? Ah, the ship. My younger brother Cluia built that vessel long ago and flew it to the blue planet. He took with him several of our secrets, such as the ones employed by your Devil's Road and in airships, a gift to your people. Cluia was fascinated by your planet and wished to know more of it. And while he was there, he fell in love with a woman of your planet. She later bore him two children. One of them was you. What? Me? Then that voice I heard at Mount Ordeals was the spirit of your father. Indeed, you are the very image of Cluia in his youth. So it was my father. He vested in you his power so that you might prevent Zemus' plot from coming to fruition. Zemus must be stopped, for your planet's sake and for that of my people as well. We must hurry to the Tower of Babel near Eblin. The tower? It's protected by some kind of barrier now. There's no way in. I should be able to bypass the barrier. You must not let the giant of Babel be unleashed upon your world. The Lunarian Consorial joined the party. Alright, so unfortunately, I don't have room for all these mages. Cecil, who could have known how weighty your destiny you bore? He's underleveled. And Cecil's father lived here once, didn't he? Oh, that you could see the fine man your son had become, Gluia. My father, a Lunarian, and that voice in Mount Ordeals. Well, I thought he was a bit odd, but half Lunarian? Let's do this guy. I'm not going to use him for very long. Oh, abilities, yes. I can do this. Ah, uh, the aura staff isn't good. I'll just do this. Whatever. I don't really need any more damage. Lunarians rest deep beneath your feet, bound in a dream-filled sleep. The soil is their guardian, charged with preserving the tranquility and tranquility of their slumber. We are the Lunar Crystals. Zemus is possessed of a fearsome will. Even sealed within the bowels of the moon, his evil pulses with a life all its own. Zemus used Golbez as his pawn to gather together the blue planet's crystals. He then amplified their power by means of the Tower of Babel. The planet at our center is a transporter that leads to the moon's core, Panel, where Zemus is imprisoned. This moon is sustained by the delicate balance that exists between us and the eight crystals of the blue planet. Zemus has erected a barrier from within his prison, sealing off the moon's core. Why would he do that? 
Three eight crystals form a seal that binds Zemus to his sleep. Oh, so bless? Oh yeah, I've got to give Soil some abilities. I think just three? There's a lot to give him here. Darkness. Lunar whales respected. Yeah, there's an augment that I could have, but uh, I don't think I've done enough. I think there's more to the. No, I think I found naming way in the fame mark. Okay, if I didn't get Yang before I did this, I would have lost all these things from Yang. Oh, here we go. Maybe there we go. Maybe this is what I want. Omni casting. Oof. Okay, I want two augments on him. Um, cry is really good. Analyze, I don't need. Abilities. Something that you might notice about Fusoyal right off the bat is that his MP is really low for his level. His intellect and spirit aren't even all that good. So, yeah, he's just not as good at, as anyone else at this point. It's going to be down to Bless to really make him useful. These panels, by the way. They regenerate your HP and MP. I don't think I need any more. Cecil's basically at full. Yeah, I would like him to help nuke and stuff. But his MP is too small to really benefit from... Uh... Oh, hello. Critical and come on, it's in the back row. Okay. He's getting like 13 MP back per turn. Bless is really good though. It dramatically increases the uh, MP regeneration you got. I think I'll have. Libra. And now we can see what he's weak against. Bless is supposed to be restoring our MP, isn't it? Oh, there we go. This is fire. Got me to you, awesome. 250, you say? Flare is only 55. There's 160. I could possibly, um, 
I can get Rydia to spam Flare later on. Collapses. I guess that's a Star Wars reference. How Obi Wan Kenobi was unbodulated upon his demise. That casting is overkill, but I'm still gonna do it. I don't think Blessing is going to really come into play. I think these fights are over before Blessing even kicks in. If that, if that last attack didn't miss, I could have probably just taken those guys out with just the kicks. have any weapons that can be used as damage. At least nothing useful. Yeah. His healing is still really useful outside of combat. I can pretty much just heal with him going through these fights. All it really does is slow me down a bit. Go for the critical, jeez. Regenerate her MP, but not enough to do anything with Claire or Odin. Just shame, I'll probably never use Leviathan. Just not as good as dual casting. Which is fair, dual casting is really overpowered. Is 250. Flare is 160. Baraka is only 100. Wow. I'm surprised because uh, Fyra is a lot weaker than Baraga. Baraga is twice as strong. It's more MP efficient. Same with uh, Fire and Baraga. 20 to 50. Oh, but it's five times stronger. Let's 
also the fact that I was that Ithridia uses Flare, it's only a single target. 66? Maybe I can be spamming Odin. I never really use Odin. It might be great for random encounters. If I can heal for more than 55 per turn. I can summon Odin every turn. I just didn't like instant death skills, but, but back when I played these games originally. So I figure. Oh, nice. I figure if I get a attacked three times and I attack e each of the enemies once, I should do about the same damage as being attacked three times and then hitting everyone for a third damage. But with a second, I have a chance of killing one of them before they become an issue. Especially true when fighting things like ants. What is that? I gotta see what that does. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Because I think if you go into the ship, you go straight into the next level. You know what? I just saved. Actually, I'm gonna try to, to attach my previous video onto this one. So it should be a, a pretty decent place to stop. So I'll just see you guys later.